There is growing academic and policy interest in safe assets. These are assets that maintain a stable value over time, even after macroeconomic shocks. Uh, due to this characteristic, they play a crucial role in the financial system. They are reliable store of values, but they are also good as collateral in a wide range of financial transactions. Now, highly rated government bonds are the primary source of safety supply. But evidence has shown that the private sector or the financial sector can also produce private substitutes. So I study how banks produce safe assets in response to the increase in demand, and I assess what is the financial stability implications of this activity. One of the core business of banks is granting loans to households and firms. But banks lending is inherently risky because the payoff might fluctuate. So in order to meet uh, investors' demand for safety, banks can structure their liability side into two types of claims. So on one side, you have equity, which is a junior claim that absorbs most of the risk of the asset side. So if the loan portfolio underperforms, equity holders would, bear, would be bearing most of, the losses in, in most of the losses. On the other hand, we have debt, that it's a senior claim, and it's backed by the safe payoff of the loan portfolio. When banks hold enough equity in their liability side to absorb potential losses most of the times, uh, the debt can be made safe, and therefore it can cater to the demand for safety. Now, the safe payoffs of the loan portfolio might not be enough to meet the demand when this demand is high. So they have to find ways in which they make their asset side safer. And one way in which they can uh, uh, make this asset side safer is through diversification. Indeed, banks are specialized in certain regional and industry segments, and therefore they might be vulnerable to uh, some region and industry specific uh, risk. So to mitigate the exposure uh, to this region and industry specific risks, uh, banks can trade with each other their loans. So in particular, they can sell a fraction of their loans. They can pull those loans with the loans of other uh, banks, and therefore they can construct a diversified portfolio. And they can use the senior tranche of this diversified portfolio to issue more debt. This is in essence securitization, although in practice it might be a bit more complex or might involve a more complex financial intermediation. While securitization is useful for loan diversification, it also reduces the quality of the loans. Why? Well, actually banks, when they grant loans, and if they are planning to sell them off, they have less incentive to screen their borrowers. And therefore, they end up lending to riskier borrowers, which might undermine financial stability and also the uh, real activity. So in addition, the quality of the loans also affect the amount of debt that banks can issue. In fact, the higher it's the overall quality of the loans in the economy, the higher it's going to be the safe payoffs of the diversified portfolio. And therefore, banks are going to be able to issue more safe debt. Therefore, the interaction between the diversification and the loan quality is going to determine or shape the supply of safe debt to the economy by banks. So a key finding of my study is that banks fail to internalize how the quality of their loans affect the safe asset creation in the economy. This process relies on the overall quality of loans in the economy. Therefore, individual banks have an incentive to free ride on the effort of others. Okay? As long as the others create a high quality loans, uh, they can benefit from higher safe asset payoff from the diversified portfolio, and therefore uh, issue uh, safe debt without actually bearing the full costs. So this leads to excessive securitization and therefore to excessive diver loan diversification at the expenses of reducing the loan quality. So this inefficiency calls for policy intervention. I then study the effectiveness of different policy tools. For instance, I try to assess how the public supply interacts with the private supply. However, I find that although it might mitigate the inefficiency, it does not really solve it. So in this aspect, the most effective tool is going to be a risk retention uh, requirement. This tool actually is going to increase banks' skin in the game and therefore their incentive to create high quality loans while curving the excessive diversification and securitization. 